Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association. Missouri produces wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details on the variety of products made in the state are at ChooseWood.com. It's Wednesday, March 15th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Opera Theatre of St. Louis presents the world premieres this week of three short works written by artists who are usually outside the opera world. The pieces include viewpoints and sounds historically excluded from the stage. This sounds like jazz. It sounds like black joy. It sounds like blues. And it sounds like me. In just a few minutes, St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin will report on artists working to expand the predominantly white repertoire of opera. St. Louis's circuit attorney wants an effort by Missouri's attorney general to remove her from office thrown out of court. Kim Gardner is also seeking a stay of proceedings until the filing to dismiss is addressed by a judge. She filed the legal documents along with her response to Attorney General Andrew Bailey's motion to oust her as the city's top prosecutor last night. Bailey says Gardner has neglected the duties of her office by allowing cases to languish, not keeping in touch with victims' families, and not filing charges on cases filed by the St. Louis Metropolitan Police Department. Gardner denies many of the allegations and says the attorney general's petition does not make a claim for her ouster. St. Louis leaders are launching a series of economic development initiatives. St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke reports. The initiatives direct federal funding and private donations to things like support for small businesses, down payment assistance programs, and neighborhood beautification. The efforts will be directed to primarily black and brown communities in St. Louis that have faced historic disinvestment. This is part of Mayor Tashara Jones' ongoing economic justice plan. Delivering economic justice for all who live here will make our city more economically competitive, while creating change residents can see and feel in their neighborhoods. But this is a team effort, and government cannot shoulder this burden alone. MasterCard is making a $1 million donation to a new Economic Justice Accelerator Fund. I'm Kate Grumke, St. Louis Public Radio. A former St. Louis County police officer who is suing the department is the new Ferguson police chief. Troy Doyle starts the new job April 1st. The Ferguson City Council officially approved the hire last night. He replaces Frank McCall, who resigned last month. Doyle recently retired from the county police department. He sought the county's chief job in 2019 but was not selected and filed a complaint with the Equal Opportunity Commission. He claims campaign donors for County Executive Sam Page did not want a black police chief. Page says Doyle was his pick, but the police board went in another direction. The Illinois Supreme Court has heard arguments in a case involving a new state law that would abolish cash bail. Mawa Iqbal reports. State's attorneys and sheriffs who sued to block the new law argue it's an overreach of the legislature's powers. Well, County State's Attorney James Glasgow said he supports bail reform, but... There are also situations where uh, the, the courts have to have the ability to control uh, in cases of violence, and that's our main, our main concern here. After the hearing, Illinois Attorney General Kwame Raoul said he is optimistic based on the judge's reactions and questions. Any layperson can sit and read the Constitution and nothing in it says that you have to have cash bail. The court did not indicate when a final opinion will come down. I'm Mawa Iqbal. Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker and 14 other governors are calling on major pharmacies such as Walmart and CVS to announce if they will sell abortion medication. This comes after Walgreens decided not to sell the drugs in 20 states, including four where they remain legal. The Food and Drug Administration ruled in January that abortion medication could be sold in brick-and-mortar stores. Pritzker says that decision allows pharmacies to decide if they will go through a certification process to sell the drugs. They need to answer what are they going to do when the pill becomes available in, uh, to be distributed and sold in those states. What do they intend to do? Because they're all being quite quiet while one pharmacy company you know, has said what, what they intend to do. Pritzker has spoken to Walgreens executives to express his disappointment with their decision, but is not saying if Illinois will take further action. One of the St. Louis area's biggest celebrities is already thinking about next year's 314 Day. Nelly is planning an Olympic-style event for high school alumni. St. Louis Public Radio's Chad Davis reports. 
A year from now, Nelly and the 314 Day Foundation will host the high school alumni games to celebrate the big day. It will center on the city's most asked question, where'd you go to high school? In March 2024, alumni will represent their schools to compete in athletic, academic, and STEM competitions for the title of high school alumni champion. Nelly is working with the 314 Day Foundation and hopes this will bring people together from alumni associations across the region. It's just about, yo, how do you find something that can basically have the whole city to participate in and celebrate? So we like to do things around education as, as I've always been able to do. Graduates who have celebrated their 10-year reunion will be eligible. I'm Chad Davis, St. Louis Public Radio. Opera Theater of St. Louis presents the world premieres this week of three short operas. They were chosen by a panel of community members, mostly artists of color from outside the opera world. As St. Louis Public Radio's Jeremy Goodwin reports, the works address black queer culture, black female inventors, and a 2017 Supreme Court case involving an ethnic slur. When Simon Tam and his bandmates, all Asian Americans, called their rock group the Slants, they wanted to reclaim a racial slur. But the federal government refused to let them trademark the name, saying it was offensive. The Slants took their case to the Supreme Court and won. But even in the courtroom, Tam felt powerless. It feels invisible as if it didn't matter if I was in the room or not. You had a bunch of attorneys all arguing about what's offensive to Asian people, but the only Asian people in the room are not allowed to say a thing. Slanted, an American rock opera, highlights a question Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg asked the government's lawyer. Doesn't it matter that everyone knows the band members are Asian? Tam and co-composer Joe Jang looked for inspiration for the opera from other rockers. Joe showed me this really amazing duet with Freddie Mercury singing with an opera singer. I want all the world to see And I was like, that's what I want, except it's going to be like my character and Ruth Bader Ginsburg having their special moment. Does it not matter? Can I feel so unheard? What's possible with is that you can go bigger and kind of more over the top than you ever could imagine doing so on like a pop music album. This recording is from an informal workshop of the three pieces in December. The world premieres this week will be fully orchestrated. They all tell stories that are hard to find in American opera houses. There's no opera that exists that highlights black female inventors, so ours is the first to do so. That's composer Delshawn Taylor, he and librettist Samia Bashir wrote Cook Shack. It's about a young black girl who's visited by three successful black women from the past. They all come back to life to tell her their stories. Annie Turnbull Malone is among them. She became one of the richest people in Missouri selling hair care products she designed for black customers. Malone tells the young schoolgirl her hidden strength is to just be herself. Taylor says it's time to celebrate black success. There are not many stories that highlight the black experience, particularly the female black experience that are not rooted in trauma. To have the opportunity to produce a work that is about black women and black female inventors and to see them speaking from their experience, I think is something that's very needed. His score incorporates various musical styles. There's also a range of musical influences on Trayvon Griffith's short opera, Madison Lodge. This sounds like jazz. It sounds like black joy. It sounds like blues. And it sounds like me. Madison Lodge takes place in the 1920s. It tells an often overlooked story of the Harlem Renaissance, the roots of black, queer, ballroom culture. A character named X moves from the South to Harlem and discovers his sister has found a home dressing in drag at a place where raucous, queer-friendly parties thrive under the ever-present threat of police raids. The regulars welcome X with open arms and dancing legs. Riffing 
Griffith says a black queer artist can best express black queer joy. These characters, you actually get to see them in their true authentic self, and a lot of times you see these characters um, being stereotypes, depending on who's writing it. For so long, we have seen um, the black queer community as spectacles, um, so I really want to show the humanity of us. The artists in this first round of Opera Theater's New Works Collective say they're making room for other voices that previously have been excluded, and stories whose time for telling is long overdue. I'm Jeremy Goodwin. St. Louis Public Radio. Our David Casares edited that report. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, providing more than 41,000 jobs in the production of wood pallets, railroad ties, white oak barrels, hardwood floors, and more. Details at choosewood.com.